Welcome to Electron Online. Now let's tackle the question, how do molecules in the atmosphere actually absorb radiation? And it turns out some molecules are very good at doing so, and others are not capable of absorbing electromagnetic radiation. And the big, I, the big separator between those two groups is whether or not a molecule has a dipole moment or not. Well, before we take a look and see what a dipole moment is, let's take a look and see what radiation is. Electromagnetic radiation, as it moves through space or through the atmosphere, has an alternating electric and magnetic field. So the electric field is always becoming stronger, becoming weaker, turning around, going the opposite direction, stronger, weaker, turning around, always oscillating back and forth, always flipping direction, always changing uh, amplitude or magnitude, and the same with the magnetic field. Matter of fact, the magnetic field and the electric field oscillations are perpendicular to one another. So what happens is, since the wavelengths tend to be very large in comparison to the size of a molecule, then as the electromagnetic radiation is passing by the molecule, there will be the presence of an electric field. An electric field will be able to tug on the molecule if it has a dipole moment. So now we need to understand what a dipole moment is. Typically a molecule has a dipole moment when there's a separation of charges. For example, when we have a water molecule, on one end we have an oxygen atom, on the other end we have two hydrogen atoms, and on the side where we have the oxygen atom, the molecule tends to be more electronegative. And on the side where we have the two hydrogen atoms, the molecule tends to be more positive. So we have basically an electric field presence from the positive side to the negative side, and that's what we call the dipole moment. For a water molecule, it's 1.85 debye's, and the debye is equal to 3.33564 times 10 to the minus 30 coulombs times meters. So some molecules have a very large dipole moment, some have a very small dipole moment, and some have none at all. For example, the molecules oxygen, nitrogen, and argon have no dipole moment at all, so electromagnetic radiation can simply move right past it and there will not be any interaction, and so therefore those molecules do not absorb radiation. So that's, and that is more than 99% of the atmosphere. So only a handful of molecules are able to absorb radiation because either they have a dipole moment, such as uh, water vapor or nitrous oxide, or they can be induced to have a temporary dipole moment through vibration because normally carbon dioxide and methane do not have dipole moments. They have zero dipole moment, but when you can get them to vibrate, through collisions, they will have temporary dipole moments, and while they're having those temporary dipole moments as they're oscillating, that's when you can have an interaction between the electric field oscillations of the electromagnetic radiation and the temporarily induced dipole moments of those molecules. So the five most important molecules in the atmosphere that are able to interact with electromagnetic radiation and absorb some of that radiation is carbon dioxide, water vapor, nitrous oxide, methane, and ozone, the O3 molecule. Now, how exactly do they interact and what kind of effect can that have? So you can see, depending upon how the radiation approaches a molecule, the electric field can either be up and down, left and right, forward and backwards. It can be you know, oriented in various ways. And remember that these are very, very long relative to the size of the molecule, so as it's passing by, there'll be an interaction between the electric field that's present and the dipole moment of the, of the molecule. For example, if the electric field is directed from the right to the left across this molecule, the positive charge will tend to feel a force in the same direction as the electric field, and the negative charge will tend to feel a force in the opposite direction to the electric field, so it will cause the, the molecule to turn around or to spin around, potentially gathering energy by going into a, another rotational mode. Or, if the electric field is directed this way, from the bottom to the top, Notice that the positive charges will get a force pushing it upward, and the negative charges will feel a force pushing downward, and so we're compressing the molecule, and we get the molecule to then absorb energy to go into a vibrational mode. As long as the energy contained in the photon is the right kind of energy required to put it into that 
vibrational or rotational mode because that could only be done in quantized steps. So the energy in the radiation in the photon must be exactly equal to the energy required to get it either oscillating or vibrating or rotating in a particular mode. The energies of that mode to the next level need to be exactly equal to the energy within the photon. When that's a match, it can take that energy, make it rotate, and then that photon will disappear and the energy will not be contained in the atom. If there's no match, the radiation will simply continue on and the molecule will be left alone, not being able to absorb the energy. So that's how energy is absorbed from electromagnetic radiation. It's through the interaction between the dipole moments, either the existing dipole moments or the induced dipole moments, so that then the electric field within the electromagnetic radiation can then interact with the dipole moment either there or created of the molecule and cause it to rotate or cause it to to vibrate in some mode. And that's how these molecules are champs at absorbing energy, and that's why these molecules simply cannot do it. And that's how it's done.